All right, so we'll look at getting pallets into the six line and and out of the six line essentially. So FC forty five. Uh, is the code like the sequence code for sticks and FC46 takes the these sequences and that's where all your outputs going drive sorry drive your motors and your pallet stops your air so F's was that um, and there's similar f function for these for retail which is below and industrial bags is up at FC35 so they're quite similar so if we go into FC 45, change to pellet sticks. So this used to have just code to get into the old pelletizer and then it had some IO handshakes. So I've just extended the, the code here to run. So if we have a look at the comment on network one, it's got cart to pop up conveyor. So this is the conditions that it needs to transfer a pellet from from the cart to the pop up conveyor on the stick line. So M80.5 has got to be true, and we can't, and so this is the cart predefined transfer to 2kg floor module retail sticks. So the, that's a predefined encoder value that we want the cart to go to to be in line with sticks. So the cart is actually in the same location to rot to send pallets to retail as well as to sticks. It's just for sticks it doesn't rotate the turntable beforehand. Um, and this is here is the cart encoder value. So I think this is like 756 by memory. Is that just an enable? That's like an enable that the cart's ready to transfer, so it's obviously... So that enables the compare function? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's like an en enable. So that's got to be true to get, to get to this state, for this to be true. So if the cart's, you know, turned, or not, well, in this case, not turned, and it's at the... at the... end of the track, then I look at the data bit on the cart, so if it's if six is true, then I know that this pallet belongs for sticks. So I'm going to send it to the sticks line. Is the cart in position? So there's a prox flag on the bottom of the cart. So I think that's that's going to be true. Um, and here's some pallet sensors on the cart. So I'll make sure that there is. No, no pellet on the for the lifter and actually on the lifter, and I make sure that the lifter is down. So the lifter has a airbag that pulls a, a smaller chain conveyor up. So that's got to be down to allow the transport of the pellet onto it. So it's got, the bottom clock has got to be true, and I can't be running another. Um, another sequence that involves these conveyors. So the other sequence, the only other sequence that involves these conveyors is transferring from the pop-up conveyor to accumulator position one, one. So I can't be trying to drive to accumulator position one and then want to drive onto the pop-up as well. So I've got to at least have no states. Uh, the, I, I can't have any data on the lifter, so yeah, I can't have any pallet data on the lifter. So you can actually add and delete data on the HMI to match what's physically there. So if, if the PLC thinks there is something there, but the sensor says it's not, it actually won't transfer there and it'll hang, essentially. And because this is in my transport safety zone only, so the pallet transport, I only need my pallet transport to be okay. To run from the accumul from the pop-up to the accumulator, I'm going from the transport zone to the um, sticks and retail zone. So therefore, in that one, I'd want to have both safe. This one, there's essentially three bits for each um, 
sequence. So this sequence is just for the getting a pallet from the cart to the lifter. And that's one little sequence, so there's three bits to trigger it. So there's conveyor move request. So here are, we are requesting to move the conveyor, to find, move the pallet. So that's, we, we, want, we want to do it. Down here is the request. If we've got the request and the pallet system is in auto and start, we've got the start program and running, then we set run. We want to run it. The run latches itself. Sorry, it doesn't latch itself. So the run, we come down a couple. If I have a request and I run it, then I set start. So I've actually I've started the sequence to move the pallet. This is a set reset, so I've started it because I can stop, I can press the operator stop, and I can pause it, but I want to remember that I've actually started this sequence. So my start latches the run because as the pellet's moving forward, my request is going to drop off because the pellet's going to break these sensors because it's moving through there. But we want it to keep running because that's what we're doing. So once it starts running, start will be set, which will cause run to stay high. To and that stays high until we are running. We're still running. A timer expires. The transport safety has to be okay because we know we can't complete the the cycle if we've lost safety and this essentially passes straight through here so um, I've got a prox that's not positioned great it's sort of on an angle after two after it is covered for two and a half milliseconds the output of this timer timer T130 goes high this is a on delay timer um, SODT, so on delay timer. So you press F1 or you come into here, you can read up about the timer of how it reacts. Make pretty good manuals, this stuff. So this bit here is the output of that timer. So after the pallet has gone past this sensor for two and a half seconds I reset my start I'm setting that a bit that I have actually transferred a pallet to the sticks these three rungs are just a watchdog timer it's pretty ugly so if I don't get this timer expire I'm just going to keep running so they've used a counter and so, if I'm in the state, start, and I'm actually running the motor, am I okay? Move zero, set a bit. This like I said, this bit's used a lot of places, so it's just zero, memory, memory bit 0, 0.0. If that's high, so if I'm running the conveyor, I get a pulse every second, I count down. And I'm counting down from 30. So if I'm not running the conveyor, I reset my watchdog to 30 seconds. If I am, am running the conveyor, I count every sec every second, I decrement the counter by one. If this counter expires, this will go low and I'll reset my state. So from there, from here above is the code from getting the cart pallet from the cart to the lifter. That's repeated again and again for each sequence of moving the parts. So here, the pallet. So here we're moving from the pop-up lifter to the accumulator position one. So here, if I've got a pallet on the lifter, 
or if there's data there and there's no there's no pallet detected on the accumulator first position and I want both the pallet stops to be up and these are the sequences that I don't want to be running so I can't be transferring a pallet to the accumulator sorry to the pop-up I can't be indexing from the accumulator position 1 to position 2 and I can't be transferring from the position 2 to the load station and I can't have any data on the I have to have no data on the accumulator position 1 if all that is good and my sticks is healthy so this will be a programming error I should have transport in there because to do this sequence I need to have both transports safe and stick safe. This is just telling me that I'm making a very long um, network run that when I print it it's going to go on multiple networks so it doesn't it's fine. So if I have that then I have a request stop clicking I think request to go from the pop-up to the accumulator position one. Again, if I'm making a request and I'm in the running state, I do my run, which sets my start bit. My start bit latches my run, so I want to keep running. And my start bit gets reset, which turns off my run after the timer expires for the first accumulator position sensor for 700 milliseconds. So I drive past the sensor for 0.7 seconds more just to make sure that I'm actually driving into the pallet stops. Um, so we'll just trace this cross-reference this run bit. So I click on here, edit, go to location. These are all the bits that it's read. So it's read a few times. It's written once and it's read. It's written once and it's read a lot. One, two, three, four, five times. So these will be. This is all in FC45, the sequence stuff. But we can see how it actually does actuators. So if I do. If I. Uh, in the run state. and my sticks empty pallet lifter is at the top so my lifter's got to be up then I run that conveyor forward so this is the chain conveyor on the lifter on the pop-up lifter for the airbag I can also see it here so the same bit if I'm running from the pop-up to the accumulator position then I also want to run this motor and this motor is the accumulation motor. I also want to run the accumulation motor if I'm transferring from position 1 to position 2 but I need my pallet stop to be down so there's a re switch on the cylinder there and if I'm moving from the accumulator position 2 to the load station then I need my second pallet stop to be down. I've also got jog buttons on the HMI that I can just press and run these contactors these don't latch, so when you let go of the HMI button, the motor will stop.